first ever attempt at a YouTube video like this where I'm holding a microphone, brand new setup. Let's just see how this goes. Ever since I started this whole like Instagram and TikTok stuff and I built up a following, the most question I get all the time is how did you get here? So this YouTube video is an attempt at answering that. For those of you who probably must have been stumbling upon this video, I am the system specialist for the aerodrome Heathrow Airport. Heathrow Airport is the biggest airport in the UK. I'm an engineer and I look after all of the systems that are outside the terminal building when you're at an airport. So when you're in the terminal, when you're on the plane and you look out, the, look out of that window and you see that massive airfield and all those systems on there, I'm the specialist for those at the biggest and busiest airport in the UK and I'm only 26 years old. I want to share a little bit about my journey and how I got here. Hopefully there's some nuggets in there for you to actually learn and like take on board in your own journey and take that with you. That's what I'm hoping for. If you want to know more about my role, like the system specialist for the aerodrome, what does that mean? Let me know in the comments. I will make a video about it. But for now, let me answer the most popular question I've ever received, which is how did I get here? Now let's take it right back. <laughs> To the start, let's go GCSE levels. I was a shy kid in school, very, very shy. So at GCSEs, I've actually done 11 GCSEs. Now to run you through them, I've done triple science, so that's biology, chemistry, and physics. I've done English literature, and I've done English language. I've done maths, business, geography, IT, RE, Arabic, and I've also done French. I got an E in French, so we won't count that one. I got pretty decent grades. I got four A stars, four A's and three B's and one E, obviously. Uh, an A for maths, B's in both my English, A in physics. The two highest grades out of all of those was actually biology and chemistry, which might surprise some of you. I was never the best at maths and physics. Those were not my strongest subjects. I just enjoyed them the most. I was not top set in maths. I was actually bottom set in maths and I was out to prove my teacher wrong. I got an A, even though she had predicted me a B, so I really worked hard to get better at maths. Now, when I finished my GCSEs, that's when I moved on and I went to do my A-levels, right? It got me into a college not far from here called St. Dominic's, um, and that's when I done my A-levels. And at A-levels, I actually chose four subjects. I done maths, further maths, physics, chemistry. They told me, choose like your fourth subject or something you may enjoy. I chose further maths. As you can tell, I'm a nerd. I actually really enjoyed doing maths at my GCSEs and my A-levels. It was always hard. I always found it difficult, but I enjoyed the challenge. It was like, I'm that type of crazy. From my predicted grades, after I done my AS level with those four subjects, maths, further maths, physics and chemistry, I got, for my AS, I got A, B, B, B. So one A and the rest were Bs. And my predicted grades were A star, A, A, B. The B predicted was in further maths. See, I actually really enjoyed further maths, but I had to drop it just because my predicted grades wasn't as high as chemistry. Looking back, I kind of do regret that. I wish I'd continued with further maths because it would have helped me a lot more when I was in uh, doing my degree, which I'll get to in a second, like what my degree was. For my A2 levels, I continued with maths, physics, and chemistry, and predicted grades, A star, AA, I was gassed. I applied to, to loads of universities, including Imperial, who entry requirements were A star, AA. I also applied to a couple of them. So for my USAP, UCAS application, I applied to Imperial, to Southampton, to Bristol, and I applied for Surrey to do aerospace engineering. Now, I chose aerospace engineering. I was kind of set on it. I knew I wanted to do something to do with aviation, something to do with engineering. So I chose those as my sort of universities of choice, literally just because like the internet said that those were the best grades. Guess what? Imperial, rejected. Southampton, rejected. Bristol, rejected. I was rejected from loads of universities. In the end, I, uh, I got off two offers. I got an offer from Queen Mary, I'm not sure I mentioned Queen Mary. Conditional offer and I got an offer from Surrey uh, as conditional offers. Now for Surrey, I had to get an AAB for Queen Mary. I didn't have to get as high. Um, guess what? Results day comes around. Didn't even get ABB. I got ABB. So I didn't even get into the university that I wanted. I wanted to go to Surrey. I didn't get into it. Queen Mary, the offer was still on the table. I could have still gone there, but gut feeling told me I don't want to go to, to Queen Mary. If anyone's been to Queen Mary University in London, there's a graveyard on campus and that just didn't sit right with me. I remember going to visit for an open day and I see a graveyard. I'm like, why is there a graveyard in the middle of this university? So I was like, nope, I'm not doing that. Anyway, I went through clearing. Now clearing for many of you is probably like, oh, I don't want to go through clearing. That's so dead. But reality is, actually going through clearing is not too bad like i got i went to brunel ultimately right and i actually went to visit the university i got in through clearing i went to brunel 
instead of going to Queen Mary because when I went to the university I actually enjoyed the atmosphere and the vibe a lot more think of this right my philosophy when it comes to universities now the advice I'd give you is when you're choosing what university to go to just choose the one number one that's got a decent reputation it doesn't have to be amazing and number two choose one that you feel like you're going to be most comfortable at choose the one where you feel like you're going to be able to be your best self you're going to be able to excel and be yourself at this university you're going to spend three to four years here it's a long time you don't want to be spending all those years just in a depressed place you want to be in a place where you're going to enjoy it so my advice to you is if you're choosing your university go to the open day actually go and experience the university go speak to people at that university and see which university you're going to be most comfortable existing in because three to four years is a long time right and you want to be comfortable when you're there now i'm at uni yeah uni bruno university i'm studying aerospace engineering that's a huge huge step for me when i get to bruno university and i start doing my aerospace engineering degree my first year grades were appalling like i mean i was getting b's b's c's maybe one a here or there but that is not the standard that i hold myself to and i knew it so literally i was getting grades that i was not happy with at all come second year i pulled my socks up i was not having that whereas in the first year i was literally predicted if I kept on that rate, I would have probably got a 2-2, two, two, maybe a 2-1 if I was lucky. By the time second year came around, I hit the books hard. I was in the library. Me and my friends were going at it 100%. I got nothing less than an A minus second year. A minuses, A pluses, A's, no, no B's, nothing. Always an A something. And I was really proud of that. Also during second year, that's when I started to apply for placement years. If anyone you knows what a placement year is, maybe you might call it a, a thick sandwich course at university. You might call it a placement year. I would highly recommend these i applied to loads of different places and guess what i got rejection after rejection after rejection after rejection 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 i was getting rejected left right and center and at this rate it was almost june time and i had got nothing but rejections for placement years. many people think that oh you know you're gonna get one straight away and you think you're gonna just smash it out and get it. Well, june the year was coming to an end i was doing exams and i still did not have a placement yet many people would have given up by then but i didn't i kept my eye on the emails that i was receiving from the university to see what other places were open and i got an email saying that there's a company called lufthansa technique many of you may have heard of lufthansa germany's national National airline apparently they had a base down the road literally down the road 50 minutes away from my uni where they done overhaul of landing gear for aircrafts oh that's pretty cool i literally went on their website and i dissected their website like i literally read every single letter that was on their website and i understood everything about this company i wrote an application and i applied a couple of weeks later i had an interview i went into that interview and i absolutely smashed it and it was for the production internship that was a year where i got to spend time on the ground in this production line actually looking for continuous improvements now you might be wondering what did lufthansa technique do in london let me explain so here's a plane <laughs> just have a plane on my desk as you do all right these things on the bottom of the plane that you see here are called the landing gear for the air Aircraft. The landing gear for the aeroplane, every 8 to 10 years, you need to do something called an overhaul, which means that you take it into a factory, you rip it apart into individual nuts and bolts and pieces, and then you put it all back together again. I've done this for these aircrafts, um, and I've done that for a whole year. My job was literally to look for improvements in this space. So I've done that, smashed it. I really enjoyed it. I loved it. During the weekends, I was selling sofas at IKEA. 9 to 5, I was working in, a, in an environment, engineering, heavy environment. Amazing. Mwah. I got discount the tickets to japan business class cheap so cheap to go to japan on business class because when you work for an airline you get some decent benefits i'd highly recommend i don't work for an airline right now but i wish i did done my internship went back to university for my third year and when i went back to university for my third year again i smashed my grades i got nothing less than an a and at the meantime i was also applying graduate jobs now usually some people are applying to left right and center hundreds of graduate jobs that was not my philosophy i think i applied to four or five graduate jobs they included bt atkins megat ether airport um, and i think one or other two others i can't even remember where i applied but i only applied to five or six and i actually got two offers one of them was from bt the other one was from Heathrow Airport. Heathrow Airport was an offer I just could not resist. It was a rotational graduate program where I got to move around. I got to see all these different things. It was amazing. I accepted my offer to join Heathrow Airport on the graduate program. And that's when the adventure really began. Now I find myself with an engineering degree. I graduated from first, imagine, after being aiming for a 2-2 or a 2-1 in first year because my grades were so bad. 
I got first in my aerospace engineering degree. I'm very proud of that with honours. Joined Heathrow Airport. I got the job before I had even graduated. It was like a dream come true. Complete blessing from God, but I put in the hard work as well. Um, and that is when I literally started the rotational program at Heathrow Airport. Now, what is the graduate scheme at Heathrow Airport? The graduate scheme at Heathrow Airport is for engineers who just come out of university to join Heathrow Airport. And Heathrow Airport, behind the scenes, has loads of different engineering teams that are looking after different elements of the airport so you have a team that's looking after the terminal buildings you have a team that's looking after the train systems underground you have a team that's looking after the baggage system you have a team that's looking after all the water systems and all these different departments as an engineering graduate you get to rotate and you get to learn about how these engineering teams are put together what challenges they have to face how they can become better and i got a chance to experience all of that and it was amazing i went from first i went to the terminal teams so looking after the terminal buildings and the air bridges then i went to what they call the asset information team now when you have all these different pieces of equipment you need a central team that just collects information about all these different pieces of equipment so i went there for about four or five months to understand how we maintain all the information how we look after it what systems we have from there i moved on to the baggage team i was looking after how do we make the process as efficient as possible i even got featured on itv you can watch that it's on itv somewhere i might put a link somewhere i might who knows i might make a video about it actually i have a video about it click up here and you'll see the video that i made about it like the behind the scenes then also i went to the airside team where i literally was outside on the runway literally on the runway looking after the airfield lights it's how do we make the lights better and during that placement i fell in love with the outside environment driving around on the airfield by the planes it was amazing then covid hit so it literally ruined everything but it ruined everything for everyone. So that's a blessing in disguise. Came back to the airport after COVID, after I was furloughed for a bit and I joined the rail team. I was on the train systems underground, joined them for a bit. And then last but not least, I joined the water team um, where I, I literally, I was looking after the drinking water. So who would have known, right? When you have drinking water at an airport, this has to be tested every single week to make sure the water that's on the planes and the water that's in the terminals is safe to drink. After all of that, the best part about the graduate program is they literally sit you down and they're like, so now that you've experienced all these different types of engineering, which engineering discipline, which engineering department did you enjoy the most? And that was like a dream come true. It's like a kid in a candy shop saying, open buffet, take as much food as you want. And then once you've tested everything, you can go and literally eat as much as you want of one thing. And I absolutely loved working on the runways, working outside the terminal buildings. So I applied for a role that had just opened up called the system specialist for the aerodrome. A couple of interviews later, I got the job and that was almost a year ago. And from a year ago till now, I have been looking after all of the systems that allow aeroplanes to move around Heathrow Airport. And honestly, I grew up local to Heathrow Airport. I've always loved the airport environment. And now I literally get to drive around the airport. I get to see different things. I get to go up the control tower, I get to speak to pilots, I get to walk down the runway in the middle of the night. Absolute blessing. Let me give you some top tips that I wish I knew along this journey. I want you to take this and I want you to run with it, yeah? As an engineer, the one thing that they won't tell you is that actually your technical skills aren't the most important thing. Shock horror, I know. Your technical skills are important, but they are not as important as actually your people skills. Your people skills. Your ability to articulate and communicate with people is far more important than any any technical skill that you think you need to build. Honestly, promise, I trust me, work on your people skills. If I could go back in time and do one thing, I would actually invest time into making myself a better communicator, a better articulator, being able to connect with people better and, and tell stories better. As an engineer, you can have the most amazing ideas up in your head, but unless you know how to actually articulate those ideas and convince the people that you're talking to that these are good ideas they won't take your ideas on board so please if you're listening to this and you think how can i be the most successful engineer possible how can i get my dream job don't just focus on the technical skills but actually invest time and energy into learning how to improve your people skills and to do that there's one book that i'd highly recommend it changed my life completely changed my life but let me show you this book how to win friends and influence people this book life 
changing. So if you want to become the best engineer success you can be, get your hands on this book, trust me. So now if you enjoyed this video and you want to hear more videos about life at Heathrow Airport, how I got here, my advice, tips during uni, all that sort of stuff, leave me a comment down below, like this, share it, put a bell notifications on, you know, do whatever you need to do. I'm here for you. I'm trying to offload all this information that's in my head that I've gained over the past couple of years on this journey and I want you to benefit from it. So if there's any questions that you have, there might be an answer somewhere in my head, just let me know. I will happily put it into a video and send it across through the ethernet. But make sure you give this a like and I'll make sure you get that video. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.